Welcome back to another video discussing the 2024 U.S. Senate elections and what if it were to happen today? If we had these elections held today, who would win what seat and what majority can we really see for the Republican Party? Because we know the Republicans are going to win the majority, and if they don't, it's over. But let's look at the facts. Right now, we're looking at a slate of basically a floor of about 50. We're looking at West Virginia flipping with certainty because we got rid of Manchin and he got rid of himself, frankly. We have Texas under Ted Cruz, who, you know, normally a blobfish would suffer to win an election where there's cameras, but Texas has gotten so Republican in the, in the, in the like concretely that it will stay that way for a while. And so you can really see the Senate staying red. The next state that I'm very confident about is going to be the state of Florida, believe it or not. Now, Florida is important because we have Marco Rubio running. So my uncle has been pretty popular. He has a, an appeal that is somewhat universal. So he's got the establishment. He has the white MAGA people. He's got the Cubans. He's got his brethren. And so with that being said, you know, the family's going to stay rich. And so realistically speaking, Florida did really well under DeSantis. We're talking electorally, not politically, because, of course, DeSantis is like completely boring. And so, I mean, that's just like Jeb Bush 2.0. Yeah. But anyway, we've got that going on. Florida looking beautiful. You can save that away. Now we have a 50-50. So if Trump wins the presidency, you've got a Republican Senate. Thank God. Now here's the catch. We have some states that are a little more in question. We're going to start with Minnesota. Minnesota is going blue, believe it or not. It's going blue in part because Amy Klobuchar is just really good at fundraising. She's really popular. And that's besides the fact that if you believe it or not, she had some connection to the George Floyd case or Chauvin or something over a police uh, misconduct uh, claim in like 2006, if you look that up, fun fact for the, for the day. Anyway, so she is really popular and she's going to win. Minnesota, for whatever reason, is just cursed. We've got a Vikings team that won't make the playoffs that has no quarterback. Um, you've got the Twins, nobody knows or cares. Hockey, not my thing. And so Minnesota is cursed. They had Keith Ellison as their attorney general, I believe. I mean, it's just a mess down there or up there, and it's about time that they actually get a Republican, but no. So Minnesota staying blue for the foreseeable future. It is what it is. You can keep your third grade substitute teacher in Amy Klobuchar for another six years. We've got the next state coming up. It's going to be the state of Ohio. Ohio is going Republican as well. Why is it going Republican, you may ask? Well, realistically speaking, Ohio is just a little more, you could say, just concretely Republican in a similar facet to Texas. It went red by about 10% in 2016 and 20 for Donald Trump. Granted, Donald Trump is a really popular candidate for the state. He's got rural appeal. He's got the, you know, like the white trash kind of like forgotten opioid American, you know, that sort of thing. He's got that down pat, right? The same thing that makes him famous in West Virginia would work in Ohio to a lesser extent. Now, on this other hand, you've got candidates that are kind of like, I think you have LaRose and you've got, uh, uh, you, not Mike DeWine, that guy's horrible. We're talking about Bernie Moreno, I believe. Now, these people aren't the best candidates. They're going against a strong Democrat and Sherrod Brown. Sherrod Brown, who's basically like a less gay Bernie Sanders. We've got a guy who is like very economically left, but, uh, you know, socially not that big of a queer. And you'll understand what I mean, right? Like there's some Democrats that are like these older white guys, 60, 70 year old white guys that are not like, oh, LGBT this, but they're obviously pro that because they're stupid and secular. Yeah. But the point is, is that Sherrod Brown is not up in your face with it. Like somebody like Pete Buttigieg or Kamala Harris. So he's not distasteful to that extent. His approval rating is net eight percent, actually. So people in Ohio like him, despite the fact that it's a Republican state solidified at this point. That being said, we saw J.D. Vance win kind of recently, a couple of years ago. And what's more is that we've got a state in Ohio that realistically, do you see Sherrod Brown winning a state that Trump will win by like 12? The answer is no. I mean, so do you really think that she's going to be one in five Trump voters that are going to that are going to be like, oh, I'm voting for Trump, but also Sherrod Brown. That makes no sense. And I'm pretty sure that Donald Trump on the campaign trail, if he goes to Ohio, will say, don't vote for Sherrod Brown. I mean, it's just that obvious. Clearly, it's not going to work. Now, if Trump were to win the state by like two and Sherrod Brown had a positive of 8%, then OK, you could see a ballot, uh, you know, a, a switch of vote, obviously. That being said, the ticket split cannot be that big. The polarity is just insane. It's not 2004 anymore. It's not going to work that way. And so we've got the state going Republican, which is a good thing for sure. Now, that's a 51 seat majority. If McConnell's still in there, whoever's still in there for Senate majority leader, you can see them having that share right there. Now, the next state I wanted to talk about today is going to be Montana. Now, Montana is a difficult thing for sure. I tell you what, because Montana in a basic way is, you know, having the incumbent advantage of the Democrat John Tester. Now, John Tester 
is a good candidate, albeit like, you know, again, kind of pudgy, white guy, shitty haircut. You can kind of see why he appeals. Now, here's the thing, though. This guy is just simply not going to win. The reason why is because the Republicans back in the day had their pants sagging down to their ankles. They were going to get taken advantage of. They were so laden all over the floor. It was a prison situation, yeah? And so realistically speaking, the Republicans ought to have more funding going in. They're going to know what's going on this time. And John Tester is going to have to answer to the voter saying, how come Joe Biden sucks? But how come the guy's economy is terrible? The interest rates on homes, mortgages, et cetera, is through the roof. Prices for housing is really high. And you've got to stay in a Montana that realistically is not doing so hot right now. And he's going to have to answer for that. And in 2018, when he won, he won because the Republicans not only were not even trying, but also because the candidates sucked. But what's even more than that, he could successfully criticize the Trump government and say, well, so-and-so was going bad or the border is a mess. He could have said something like that in 2018 when he could have played offensive against an unpopular Donald Trump. But now you've got a Joe Biden who's his president. Okay, Now, keep in mind, it's one thing that you can criticize a team that is like 8-9 and nine and it, it kind of sucks. That's Trump 2018. But it's one thing if you have to defend your six and eleven team, which is Joe Biden. Okay, you've got a guy who has an approval rating of sub forty percent. How the hell will a Democrat in a red state, a red state that has gone like twenty points Republican in the past, how could he really defend his seat? The answer is that there's no fucking way. In fact, a state that is, is going to go pro Trump by like twenty percent, how is Tester going to win that? Really? So you're telling me that like half of the Trump voters are going to vote for Tester, and how? It literally makes no sense for this to work out. So all things being equal, I think I could win Montana, frankly, okay? Now, moving on to the next state is Nevada. Nevada is looking kind of tough, folks. The thing is here is that it's going blue um, for the foreseeable future only because of the fact that Adam Laxalt isn't running. If you look at who is the uh, front runner right now for the Republicans, it's a Purple Heart recipient. So that sounds really cool. You're imagining in your head like a Jocko Willink. You're expecting like some like six-foot-tall jacked white dude. No, no, no. It's Sam Brown. The most recent poll you can look up on Google is that he's losing by five to Jackie Rosen, I believe is the Senate candidate's name for the Democrats, the incumbent, okay? So Jackie Rosen is beating him by 5%. Now, Sam Brown is a husband, you know, again, a father, small businessman, retired army captain, and Republican candidate. He's losing by 5% in the polls where Trump is most likely going to win the state. So if he's underperforming Trump in a state that Trump will barely win in 24, there's really no indication to say that he'll win. And look, again, I respect your service, but like, dude, the guy is fucking scary to look at. I mean, that's just true. It's not his fault. You know, it's just don't run for Senate as a sub five male. Ted Cruz could barely pull it off. I mean, that's an inside reference, but it's so true, man. How the hell are you going to run? Wear a mask, bro. Pretend like it's still COVID and then say you have acne here. Like, it's like so hard to look at. I mean, this is really just like Freddy, Kr Freddy Krueger's little brother. And again, I respect the service, but it's just a bad look. And Trump said, I don't want my war heroes captured, and I don't want my Senate candidates burnt alive, but God knows what jihadists did this to him, okay? I don't know what the hell happened. Look, God bless his soul, but, I mean, he looks fucking scary. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. And, like, look how dysgenic his supporters look. Look at this fucking old guy, okay? This is dysgenic. Look at his skin. Look at this girl's skin. Look at this skin. I mean, this is just scary. This is like if you had a candidate, and if you see Hellraiser 1, where the, the, the uncle— kills the brother and then wears his skin and you can see like little like blood marks because he's like wearing somebody else's skin this is basically it he looks like he stabbed some like it looks like he went to silicon valley found some like 35 year old man and he's an 80 year old guy he kills him wears his skin and now he looks like he's 55 with burn marks okay i mean i'm just a little bit disturbed i'm sorry that's just true okay Okay, and mind you, a lot of people would get in trouble for saying that, but that's just like actually the truth, okay? That's me taking the slings and arrows, okay? I'm Mel Gibson, Passion of the Christ. Look, I'll take the whippings. The guy is too off-putting to win the fucking election. If this were being held in like 1915 or something, where there weren't really cameras back then or TV, then maybe he could win. But I mean, post-Nixon-Kennedy debate, frankly, the way you look plays a small part. And granted, you don't have to be great looking, okay? Like I'd be better looking than virtually anybody in the Senate, yeah? But the difference is is that you just got to like be all right. Like don't burn my eyes. That's the issue, yeah? Okay, like for example, realistically speaking, Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin is not a good looking guy. Like by all means, he's kind of ugly. Again, the balding, he's like 70 something years old, but he's not like dysgenic, you know, like he's still a human being, yeah? And so, I mean, that's basically the bottom line. It's like, you don't have to be good looking. You don't even have to be non-elderly. You could be fat, but just don't be fucking terrifying to look at, bro.
I mean, folks, like, I mean, like, this is like literally one step removed from Freddy Krueger. I mean, so I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway, lesson learned, Nevada GOP, don't run that guy again. All right, so Nevada's going blue. I'm sorry. Now we're going to talk about uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin is going to be a little difficult because in, in a lot of ways, Tammy Baldwin is not the worst. She's a bisexual, if that counts for anything. She has a weird haircut. Anyway, so Tammy Baldwin is going to be one of these figures that will outperform, I think, the generic Democrat by a little bit, but not enough to win. Now, if Trump wins the state of Wisconsin by like upwards of two to three, I could see the Republican winning Wisconsin, the reason being. Is that, of course, ticket splitting isn't that big of a deal when somebody as polarizing as Donald Trump is on the ballot. The Republican is guaranteed to get at least his amount of support. So with that being said, I think the Republican would win. Now, there's some candidates that are worse than others. The nominees aren't really confirmed yet, yeah? But Clark has some baggage that you would not want to see in the general election come out to the light of day, yeah? So what that means is, is that, you know, if he's not the nominee, then we could, you know— 50-50, I'm leaning towards Republican, of course, because we've got blessings coming in our way. Obviously, the Democratic president that the incumbent senator has to defend is not so hot. You know, so at that point, you know, when your president's son is Hunter Biden, I mean, there's a mess. It's a lot of fun, but it's a mess. So we're going to have the Republican Party winning the state of Wisconsin. Now, it gets a little even more complicated, you know, in the place I was born, Michigan. Yes, Michigan. Now, this place is a little more difficult to understand because in a major way, You've got the Republican Party, which is fucking terrible in the state of Michigan. If you follow it, they recently outvoted their current chairwoman because it's been a mess thus far, yeah? And so what that means is that when you have Gretchen Whitmer, who's like this very unappealing, like fucking like the type of girl that would slap you with the ruler during, you know what? She She's like dominatrix, you know, she's a mess, yeah? So, so basically you've got that as your governor. You have Tudor Dixon, who was hot in my opinion, looked like the hot version of Malcolm's mom from Malcolm in the Middle, yeah? So you had her lose by a lot in 2022, a midterm election that was pro-Republican, yeah? So what that means is, ultimately, I'm getting the Canadian affect the more I do the Rust Belt, I'm sorry. Anyway, so where we're from, you can see how the state is being mismanaged. Now, recently, we see some changes. We see the Republicans getting their shit together as of recently. What that means for everybody that is watching the video is that basically we've can, we can really see that coming this upcoming year, there's really no reason for the Republicans not to match Donald Trump's vote share. So if Trump wins in Michigan by one or two, you could see the open seat in Michigan go Republican. The current nominee for the Democrats presumptively is going to be Elise Stefanik, or not even her, but Alyssa Slotkin, actually. My bad. She's a little pudgy. Anyway, Alyssa Slotkin, from what I remember, it's not this like special creature or anything. So it's going to be like generic Democrat versus generic Republican. James Craig is a retired police chief or something, okay? Black Republican, good optics, okay? Brothers in Detroit might vote for him a little bit, just a, just a, a couple percent crossover appeal. So if that's true, then if Trump wins Michigan by even a little bit, the Republican ought to win. Again, this is contingent on the Michigan Republican Party voting in a new chairperson that's going to be a little more competent than the last one, which is not saying anything. And we should see Michigan going Republican as well, best case. Now, um, if we look at the state of Pennsylvania, it's looking a lot more difficult too. The reason being is that we have Bob Casey, Robert Casey Jr., who is bald, Catholic, I think, and um, at least historically has been a pro-life senator. Now he's a like again conservative Democrat Catholic moderate is the you know like the on paper. Now obviously the way these people vote is like way worse, yeah. But I mean that's like the same sort of like Joe Manchin, Kirsten Cinema, Maverick centrist position for the Democratic Blue Dog Caucus is what they call it colloquially over there. Anyway, he is very popular. He actually fucking destroyed Rick Santorum in 2006, um, which is too bad because he's one of my favorite senators of all time. And he won big in 2012 during the Obama re-election, wins big again in 2018. And in 24, I mean, frankly, again, so in 2018, he beats the Republicans so bad in a state that Trump won in 2016. So you would expect that to be a competitive election, but he's such a strong incumbent that you could really see him win easily. And, you know, his competition nowadays is going to be probably the guy who lost, believe it or not, to Mehmet Oz, David McCormick. David McCormick has been labeled as a carpetbagger similar to Mehmet Oz, but also Dr. Oz um, was not a hedge fund manager, which is what exactly David McCormick is. And so that's not a good look for the people of Pennsylvania. These fucking working class people have a shit up there. You know, they have a stick up their ass when it comes to rich people. Yeah. So hedge fund manager is not going to work. So with that being said, we're really dealing with somebody who in point of fact is going to win this election by a lot. Now McCormick 
good hope that, oh, well, if Trump wins the state of Pennsylvania by like four, then I can win by maybe two. No, 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 no. Now, here's one of these rare elections where this ticket splitting might be huge, where you could see Bob Casey win by five and Trump win by five. I mean, you could really see that. And so Bob Casey should be fine. Plus, the Democrats aren't really scared. The Democrats are scared of Arizona. The Democrats are scared of Wisconsin. The Democrats are scared of Ohio. They are scared of West Virginia, Montana. They're not scared of losing Pennsylvania, and that's for good reason, yeah? So we've got that written down. Now, the last state, the most important one, is going to be Arizona, yeah? Kerry Zona is what we're going to call it. In fact, we could see Kerry Lake win this by a lot. The reason being is that it's a three-way race. Now, we have donors saying um, that they're going and jumping ship from Kirsten Cinema to Gallego, which is good because basically what that's going to do is win it for Kerry Lake even more so. The best way for Gallego to win, because mind you, Kirsten Cinema is not going to win. She's losing donors to the Democrat because obviously she doesn't have a pathway to win, whereas a couple months ago she could have lied about that and said, like, oh, there is a chance. But Carrie Lake is doing better in fundraising than she could have possibly anticipated. And so her whole, like, cleaving onto the Republican message and stealing away those McCain voters is not going to happen. And plus, you have to also understand that Trump is operating off of a very high floor in Arizona. The Trump movement, so to speak, in a vague sense, and Carrie Lake have, like, a four of, let's say, 49% of the vote in Arizona. And a head-to-head, -head, that wouldn't be so good. But in an election where Kirsten Cinema is poised to take uh, somewhere in the teens of Democrats away from Gallego, you're looking at a candidate in the Democrat that is going to lose support over um, somebody who's an independent candidate running third party, basically. And so with that being said, you see Carrie Lake, sh she should get virtually all of the Trump support. I personally, for one, don't see Trump winning the state by, let's say, like 5% or 3%, which is what I predict. And have Gallego somehow win. It doesn't fucking make sense at all. That would only work if Kirsten Cinema is taking net voters away from Kerry Lake, but not from Gallego. That makes no sense. You take your average Kirsten Cinema supporter and voter, which there's not many of, they're gonna most likely be like some Barnes and Nobles employee. It's not gonna be a Kerry Lake supporter. It's going to be a Gallego. So if he's taking from Gallego, it's gonna be like a similar RFK uh, thing, right? So if we have an election where it's like 40% Trump, 40% Biden, 20% RFK. Those voters would mostly detract from Biden, obviously. So that's like the same way, right? So Kirsten Cinema is like a left-leaning moderate. She's going to take more voters away from Gallego. And so when it comes down to the brass tacks of it all, we're seeing a Republican win in Arizona because, again, Trump is going to have Kerry Lake match in parity more or less the same amount of votes. Virtually anybody voting for Trump is going to vote for Lake, etc. So if that's the case, then you know, it's going to look like a mess for the liberals. And so that's why Republican Arizona is going to be a reality, in my opinion. So that's your prediction. Comment down below what you think, like the video, and subscribe for more content like this. Adios.